This video gives some properties of matrix inverses. Suppose that A and B are invertible matrices. I've written down four different properties here. And for each of these properties, see if you can figure out if it's necessarily true, no matter what invertible matrices A and B are. You may want to try some examples. Like you could pick a couple simple two by two invertible matrices and test these out. Let's start with statement one. Is it true that the inverse of A inverse is A? Well, yeah, that's definitely true because A inverse inverse is the matrix you multiply by A inverse to get the identity matrix, but A is also the matrix that you multiply by A inverse to get I. And since inverses are unique, A must equal A inverse inverse. What about this second statement? Is it true that the if you multiply two matrices together and take the inverse of that, you get the same thing as if you take A inverse and multiply by B inverse? Let's try it out on an example. I'm going to set A equal to the matrix 1, 3, 2, 7, and B equal to the matrix 2, 3, negative 1, negative 1. Then you can check that AB is the matrix negative 1, 0, negative 3, negative 1, and AB inverse is the matrix negative 1, 0, 3, negative 1. Remember, there's a shortcut formula that makes it easy to calculate the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. We just swap the entries in these two positions, which doesn't do anything in this case because the entries are the same, and we negate the entries in these two positions, and then we multiply the whole thing by the scalar that's 1 over the determinant, which is just this crisscross product, this times this minus this times this. And in this case, that determinant is just 1. So now let's calculate A inverse. Again, the determinant of this example is 1. And so I can just swap the 7 and 1 and negate the 3 and the 2. That's my A inverse. And B inverse ends up being negative 1 here, a 2 here negative 3 here, and a 1 here. Once again, the determinant is 1. So finally, A inverse B inverse multiplies out to negative 10, negative 27, 3, 8, which is not the same as the quantity AB inverse. So this statement is false. We've broken it with our first example. However, there is a related statement that's true. If we do, instead of A inverse B inverse, we calculate B inverse A inverse, that does give us negative 1, 0, 3, negative 1, just like when we did AB quantity inverse. So we have at least one example in which AB quantity inverse is the same thing as B inverse A inverse. And in fact, this statement is always true. AB inverse is the matrix that you have to multiply by AB to get the identity matrix. But if you multiply B inverse A inverse by AB, the A inverse A becomes the identity matrix. The IB becomes the matrix B. And the B inverse B collapses to the identity matrix. So since B inverse A inverse times AB is the identity matrix, B inverse A inverse must be the same thing as AB quantity inverse. We're using the fact there that inverses are unique. What about this next statement? Is it true that A plus B inverse is equal to A inverse plus B inverse? Again, we can try it out with an example. Let's use the same matrices A and B. If we compute A plus B by adding together the entries, we get 3, 6, 1, 6. And if we compute 
the inverse of that, we end up with a matrix 1 half, negative 1 half, negative 1 twelfth, 1 fourth, which I encourage you to check. If instead we add together A inverse plus B inverse, which we calculated up here, then we get an answer of 6 minus 6 minus 1, 3, which is not the same thing as A plus B inverse. In this case, it wouldn't help to switch the order. B inverse plus A inverse is the same thing as A inverse plus B inverse, since matrix addition is commutative. In fact, there's no relationship between A plus B inverse and the inverse of A and the inverse of B. In fact, it's possible for A and B to both be invertible, but A plus B to not be invertible. Finally, let's look at the last true-false. Is it true that the inverse of 3 times a matrix A is the same thing as 1 third times the inverse of A? Well, in our example, 3A is the matrix 3, 9, 6, 21. And you can check that 3A inverted is the matrix 7 thirds minus 1 minus 2 thirds, 1 third. But that's exactly 1 third times the A inverse matrix that we calculated earlier. So this statement is true for that particular example of A, but in fact, it's true for any invertible matrix A and any scalar, not just the number 3. So in general, K times A inverse is equal to 1 over K A inverse for any invertible matrix A and scalar K that's not 0. Makes sense that this is true, because if you take 1 over K A inverse and multiply it by K A, then pulling out the K, you get 1 over K times K times A inverse times A. Well, that's definitely the identity. It's 1 times the identity matrix or the identity matrix. And since we've multiplied two things together and gotten the identity matrix, the two things have to be the inverse matrices of each other. So 1 over K A inverse must be the inverse matrix for K times A. To summarize, if A is invertible, then A inverse is also invertible, and its inverse is A. Also, if A and B are invertible, then A times B is invertible, and its inverse is B inverse times A inverse. And finally, if A is invertible, then K times A is invertible for any non-zero scalar K, and its inverse is 1 over K times A inverse. There's one more property of inverse matrices that I want to talk about, and that's the inverse of a diagonal matrix. A diagonal matrix is a square matrix with numbers on the diagonal, which could be zero or non-zero, and zeros in all the other positions. By the diagonal, I mean the diagonal that runs from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So which of these two matrices are diagonal matrices? Well, the first one is diagonal, but the second one is not. The first one's diagonal because all the entries that aren't on the diagonal are zeros. It's fine that we have a zero on the diagonal and some numbers that aren't zero on the diagonal. The second matrix is not diagonal because even though it has zeros most of the places off the diagonal, it still has a one here. So if A is a diagonal matrix with diagonal entries given by the numbers D1, D2, D3 through Dn, and none of these diagonal entries are zeros, I'll put big zeros here to indicate that all the other entries are zeros, then A inverse is also a diagonal matrix with diagonal entries 1 over D1. 1 over d2, and so on, through 1 over dn. So for example, if we want to find the inverse of this matrix with 5 and 6 on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere, then we can write it down pretty quickly as 1 fifth, 0, 0, 1 sixth. It's not hard to convince yourself that this formula for the inverse of a diagonal matrix is true, 
just take this matrix and multiply it by your original matrix and check that you get the identity. This video showed us how to find the inverses of matrices from the inverses of related matrices. For example, the inverse of a product is the product of the inverses but in the backwards direction. And the inverse of a scalar multiple of a matrix is the reciprocal of the scalar times the inverse of the matrix.